We know the reason uh, for Christmas is because of the person of Jesus Christ, how much He loves us. And sometimes when you listen to sermons and you have uh, people telling you that you are hopeless, you are a worm and all kinds of stuff like that, and you feel like, hey, I'm you know, so depressed, you know, how come I'm like a worm or something? But, <laughs> but the truth of the matter is that you are important to God. He has created you and He has called you His child. And because of you, that's why He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to come here. There wasn't a righteous person who can take or who could take our place. Everybody has sinned. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Nobody could take our place. And it seems like we were born to die and to go to hell. Because the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. And death means that we come under the control and the subjugation of the ruler of this world. The prince of this age, the Bible says, is actually a Chinese by the name of S.A. Tan. No, not Chinese. He's just Satan. Some of you thought that whose name is S.A. Tan? Satan, all right? S.A. Tan, Satan. And he was the one who was not given the power, he wasn't given the authority to take over this place. The authority and power, they were given to us, to mankind, to Adam and to Eve, our ancestors. But you see, in order for Satan to have power, he got to do it illegally. So he usurped it. He took it from Adam and Eve. Then from that period on, he began to seek ways to destroy mankind. He didn't like Adam and Eve because this guy, this Lucifer, was his former name. He became Satan was because he was a very proud archangel. He was a worship leader. That's why I told all the worship team, when you are up here, it's very dangerous because you can become puffed up because everybody is looking at you and you become proud. And that's what happened to Lucifer. Lucifer was a, a very good angel, very handsome. And so, you know, he became very proud. And then one day he decided that he would be greater than God, that he would be God. But God cast him down. And so he had no authority, no power anymore. He no longer led the angels to worship God. But in the place of these angels, God created a creature, the Bible says, lower than the angel. And then this creature here, you and I here, we are to worship God. That's why the Lord says that He dwells in the praises of His people. Therefore, you are designed to praise God. If you do not know how to praise God, there is a missing element in your life. You find that there is certain emptiness. But those of us who have been walking with the Lord, we know that every day we want to praise God. Because that's the connection. That is the spiritual part. It's that like you wake up and you look for breakfast. But we wake up, we look for the connection. We look for that praise that we could give to God. So that the presence of God is in our house. The presence of God is in our office. The presence of God is in our car. So you find that God wants us to connect with Him. But because of Satan, therefore you find the connection had been disrupted. God said, I'm not going to give up on mankind. I will prepare a lamb that would be slain even before the foundation of the earth. Means that the Lord looked into the future. He saw what Adam and Eve would do, but He got to give them free will. He couldn't make them into robots. He said you have free will, but free will means that they could choose God or they could choose deception. And they chose deception. 
What was the deception? The deception was that you could become like God and you know good and evil, which means that you become the person who determine what is good and what is evil. And today you see what happened to this world, the, that human beings are deciding on things that only found in the privileges of God. The sacred task of God, for example, when God made men and God made women. But now, men, mankind said, let's be gender fluid. What is gender fluid? It means that I can be born a man tomorrow, I might come in a dress. And I can become a woman because I say I'm a woman. But yet, biologically, God has created a man, a man, and a woman, a woman. But you see, because of this knowledge of good and evil, therefore, man pretended to become like God. So that became the problem. That's why many of us here, we came from a background of disobedience. We came uh, from a background of self-centeredness, self-focus, selfishness. Why? Because we were God's in our own rights. We couldn't care about the real God. We just want to be God. But you see, God said, no, I'm going to restore what had been stolen. That's why this is the season of this, what we call, this incredible season of trust. And let's read this scripture, shall we? One, two, three, go. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not onto your own understanding in all your ways everybody in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path i will explain these two verses further but let this be the beginning verses to be grounded into your mind into your heart now the question here is that who or what we can trust as i began to counsel people there are some members here who have been scammed. You have been scammed by people. Now, if you have been scammed, don't raise your hand, all right? But I, I have spoken to you. You have been tricked, you have been conned, right? Somebody promised something but did not give to you. And they all came because what? Because of your trust. You trusted the person, but he in turn, he robbed you. He in turn, he conned you. And therefore, up to a certain point, your trust is shaken. Now you do not know who you can trust and what you can trust. And so, but one sure thing I, uh, that I can guarantee is that God wants us to trust Him. Because one of the biggest pain is, one of God's biggest pain is to be doubted. And one of His greatest pleasures is to be trusted. So if you learn how to trust God, you are giving God pleasure. How do you cause God to be happy? Is that learn to trust God. But very few of us, even Christian, we know how to do that. And so this morning, let's study and see how we can do that. Now let's talk about a real story, a, a, a story of real trust. How many of you have been to Niagara Falls? You have been to, all right? Just a few of you. How many of you want to go? <laughs> All right. <laughs> May the Lord, uh, you know, bring that fulfillment to pass. All right. I've been there. I, I've been there uh, in, the, in the, actually it was in the 90s. In the 90s when I was there. And I learned that Niagara Fall was made out of like three waterfalls. And that it was from Lake Erie and then all the water poured into Lake Ontario. And I also learned one truth is that they have discovered 5,000 bodies from the beer. From a few years back, they discovered 5,000 bodies from the waterfall. People actually jumped into the waterfall or they got an accident uh, or they committed suicide. All right? So that was, uh, oh, that is continuing to be a very dangerous place. But then you find that some people actually will walk across Niagara Falls on a tightrope. And that this is, uh, recently somebody did that. But I want to talk to you about the first person who did that. 
and his name was a French man called Charles Blondin. In 1859, he first time he crossed over to uh, from one bank to the other bank. It was about 1,000 1, over 1,100 feet long. Okay, and he took about 40 to 50 minutes to walk across, almost an hour. And then in 1860, a royal party from Britain went over there and they actually saw the trick. And so he, he did a lot of tricks. He put things over his head so he could walk, you know, blindfolded, and then he would do stunts and so on. He was a very confident uh, stuntman. And then uh, at one time he stopped halfway, he got an oven in the center and he cooked there and he cooked omelette. Uh, how many of you love to eat his omelette? <laughs> uh, but you might have to walk there and get the omelette, right? Uh, even when I look at the picture, my, my, my knees start to shake. Really, I, 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 I had no uh, 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 desire to climb onto high places. How many of you love tall places? Tall buildings, you know? You like that? Huh? Okay. <laughs> Sister Lisa liked it. I, I cannot. Even I was trained in the army at that time when we were doing flying fox, right? Okay? You have never seen a shivering flying fox. That's me. Because when I, I came down, I was screaming because it was so scary. So I was more or less afraid of height. And when I look at this guy, this guy is like crazy. All right? And then he wheeled a wheelbarrow from one side to the other and returned with a sack of uh, potatoes in it. You know? Cool guy, right? And then he, he crossed the rope on a bicycle on steel, means uh, puts the sticks onto his legs and then he walked with his hand, he walked with his hand, he walked with his feet, manacled, means a, hand, uh, a leg calf, calf it, or walking blindfolded, uh, performing backflips. How many of you can perform backflips on the ground? Well, most of you can't, right? I only perform backflip in my dream. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I do. All right. And he carried people across. Okay. Now you see, I'm trying to get to my point here was that one day when the, one of the royalty, Duke of Newcastle was there, Blondin asked him, do you believe I could take a man across a tightrope in this real battle? And the Duke said, yes, of course, I believe. And so... <laughs> Uh, Blondin said, okay, hop in. And the Duke said, no, no way I'm going to hop in. You see what happened is that the Duke believed, but he could not trust. You understand? Believed, but he could not trust. He could not trust Blondin with his life. So, you believe God, but do you trust Him? That's the, the, the question here. When it comes to God, belief alone is not enough. He wants you to trust Him. Means that trust Him completely. And that's why that makes a distinction between what we call a churchgoer, a mere believer, or a trusted follower of Christ. When you become a trusted follower of Christ, you are actually a disciple of Christ. In this church here, we encourage you to become a disciple of Christ. There are people who came to us and say that, Pastor, we just want to attend your church we just want to attend the service, make it short, you know, make it happy, then we go back. Now, that is not church. That is called entertainment. Huh? Most of the movie houses you have. You come to church, you want it to be one hour or one and a half hour, but you can go to movie two hours. And worse still, you can watch Korean movie 50 hours. Right? <laughs> night after night after night, you know. So tired already, the eye all like penta already, still watching Hamza Hamida. Hamza Hamida. What are you doing? Why? Because you see, you have more interest in the things of the world than in the things of God. So you, you want to be entertained, but Christianity is not entertainment. I know the West has made into entertainment, but not here. Because right now in China, the communists are arresting our pastors. And some of the very good pastors, there, there is a lawyer and he had become a pastor and now he has just been in prison. Just this week, he had been arrested. 
And that's why on the Facebook and you find on the WhatsApp, we are asking you to pray for China. Because when you become a disciple of Christ, you will pay a price. And that you must be willing to pay a price. Some of you coming here two hours is like too difficult, too difficult. Once a week you come here. But in our church, we encourage you to come for prayer meeting. We encourage you to come for Bible study. We encourage you to come for healing. We encourage you to do ministry. We encourage you to become the true disciple of Christ. That you become like John. You become like Peter who went to the temple and saw the man at the gate called Beautiful. And what did they do? They didn't just pass by and give the man two coins. But they said, silver and gold we do not have. But what we have we give to you in the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. That's true Christianity. That's the power. That's the authority God gives you. If you have been living a powerless life, get out of it. You find that your Christianity is just a religious notion. Get out of it. Because you are no better than other religions. Means you can attend other religions. Because the devil wants to keep you in religions. Christianity is more than religion. It is that powerful relationship uh, between God and you. And God is going to do that mighty work to your life. So, let me tell you what is trust. This is trust. Blondin actually carried his manager called Harry Colcott across the fall and walking on the tightrope. The manager believed in Blondin, but the manager also trusted Blondin. And that during that 42 minutes walk on that tightrope, the first time they did it, it was very tough. It says that the manager got to get down some seven times because Blondin got to balance himself. And so the, the manager got to climb down and just waited there quietly until Blondin balanced himself, then climbed back up. Isn't that scary? <laughs> right. But yet, the manager trusted Blondin. And that's the kind of trust that the God wanted, that God wanted you to have. I told you that Satan, why God wants you to trust him is because you have an enemy. Remember, you came from the kingdom of darkness and now you are in the kingdom of light. And because you are in the kingdom of light, the enemy continues to attack you. That's why you say, Pastor, why I'm a Christian, I'm still tempted. You will be tempted. You will be attacked. But you see, I want you to know that you have power and authority to fight back. Now you are in the kingdom of light. In fact, Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Not that he is the light of the world, but you are now the light of the world. You know why? It's not that you are a reflection. You are not a reflection. You are not a reflection of Jesus Christ. But you have Jesus inside you. Because Jesus is inside you, it shines out. It's like a lantern. When the bulb is inside, it must shine out. That's why you are the light of the world. And so, I want to, you to realize one thing. Is that when Jesus talked about demonic power, he also talked about your power. He gives you power and authority. Satan might be the ruler of this world. He might be the prince of the power of the air. He might be the god of this world. But God wants you to know that when you trust him, you can fight him. You don't need a pastor to come to your house. Some of you say, pastor, please come to my house. You know, pray for my house. Bless my house. You know, because my house got all the, all the spirit walking in and out. Let me tell you about the spiritual world. There are passing spirits. In fact, right now, the passing spirit, they don't want to come here because they see a lot of light. All of you here carry a light. All right? So people who are wizards, who are witches, when they see Christian, they, they knew that we are actually uh, real believers. means that we are disciples of Christ. And so what happened was that we actually glow. <coughs> there was a, a brother from Taiwan. When he was a young, young boy, he had a third eye. How many of you know about third eye? A few of you know about third eye. Okay, let me explain about third eye. Third eye means that the person was born and somehow he could see into the spiritual world. There is a spirit, spiritual world, kind of a superimposed itself 
over the physical world. So this spiritual world, you can't see it, but some of us, we can feel it, all right? So whenever I go to a place that, that is filled with demons, my whole body will go zang, zang, zang like that. All right, I, I don't know if you have this experience. There is no such word in the, uh, the dictionary called zang, zang, zang. All right, so, but, but this is how I felt. Some people will feel tingling, will feel current, but some people would actually see. In our former church, a sister actually could see demons. And when she first came to our center, we had, formerly we had a center in, in Sungai Bulo where we used to cast out evil spirit. So people would come to our center and we would cast out evil spirit. But what happened was that the evil spirit didn't leave. We cast it out. But the evil spirit lingered in the building. It was like a three stories uh, uh, building, uh, four, three, three or four. Plus the ground floor will be four. So the evil spirit will linger around. And on the first floor, you see, we, are, we were on the second floor. And on the first floor, you find that there was a, a snooker place. How many of you know play snooker? Oh, nobody understands what I said. You know? I asked. That I nobody understands snooker, bulang chai. <laughs> this very innocent crowd. <laughs> okay. Then this snooker place was what happened was that it was vacated, and the owner didn't pay the rent, and so they ran away, and they left the place in a mess, and so it was very untidy. You know, we could see, uh, uh, you know, a big mess there. And what happened was that this evil spirit, they would go there and rest. They were resting in that place. And then sometimes they will play with the leaves, you know, they got nothing to do, so they play with the leaf. So uh, the sister came and the sister saw the evil spirit uh, squatting in a corner. And so the sister told the friend, don't look, don't look. Because she got that eye and she saw <laughs> there was this dark, uh, dark uh, figure in the corner as she just entered the lift and she came up and she told us, ooh, there's spirit down there. And true enough, we experienced it ourselves because one night when we, uh, we, we heard that the lift was having problem, you know, open, close, open, close. Every, every time it opened and shut three times. Open, shut, open, shut. Then stop for a while, then open, shut, open, shut. Well, you know, the lift uh, expert came, the technician came. Nothing wrong with the lift. The lift was perfect, perfect. But it's still open, shut, open, shut, open, shut. So one day we worked very late at night, Pastor Grace and I. You know, we're very brave soul. We work very late. And so we, we, we came down and then uh, we were in the car. We were about to drive off. Then we looked at the lift. And then the lift was open, shut, open, shut, open, shut three times. Then it paused for a while. Then it opened and shut, and opened and shut, opened and shut. And then Pastor Grace volunteered me to go. So I went to cast out demon. Yeah, because I was the man, you see. So I had to, to take the lead. Uh, she didn't come and support me. She <laughs> jaga the car, you see. She, she was in the car, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Actually, I offered myself. I, I said, let me go and get rid of them. And so that's what I did. I went there and I, I stood there and I said, in the name of Jesus, I command you to get out of this building. Completely get out, all of you. Get out of this building. In the name of Jesus. And go to the mama store. <laughs> because you've got to tell them where to go. But if not, they'll go to your house. Go to mama store. So we, I went back to, so I went back to the car and I watched. And it opened and shut, you know, for three times. And it stopped in a long time. And no more. It stopped. But the next day, the mama store, the leaf spoiled. Yeah. I want you to know that you are living in the enemy areas, the territory. Because you, Jesus came, when he first came, he was invading earth for you. Invasion, you understand? He comes to get you. You belong to the enemy. He comes to save you. That's why he said, he came into darkness, but the darkness comprehend him not. But to those who comprehend him, he gave eternal life. And that's why you are here, you have eternal life. So the Bible says that we know that we are of God. Why? 
the whole world is in the power of the evil one. The Bible is very clear. What are we here doing? We have to take back the whole world. That's why Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. If you are not preaching the gospel, then you are not fulfilling what Jesus wants you to do. Some of you think that Jesus just saved you so that you can go to heaven and enjoy bakute without the cholesterol. Right? No! It's for us to save the world. So without God, if you live a life, you can be Christian. But if you live a life without connection to God, you are dead meat. Ignorance is the only weapon Satan can effectively use against you. You can read the Word of God, but if the Word of God does not saturate you, no use. You can pray like crazy, but it's not going to be effective because you are just praying to nothing. You need a connection. And that's why this morning is very important for you to understand this. Now, in Psalm 56 verse 3, you find that when the Philistines seize David in God, you know what did David say? When I am afraid, I will put my trust in whom? In you. David, a mighty warrior, he could fight better than you. You know, you can get uh, Yip Man and you can get uh, Wong Fei Hong come and fight with him. They might lose to him. He was a warrior. But yet, you see, there were times that he was afraid. How many of you actually got time that you were afraid? Uh, now got more response already. I thought some dead meat, you know. Miss Ziba, you know. You talk, they don't answer, you know. Good, you're afraid. Which means that you can pray like David and you can say, I, when I'm afraid, I trust in you. And when David fled from King Saul into the cave, you know what he said? He said, my soul take refuge in you. And in the shadow of your wings, I will take refuge until destruction passes by. Which means that destruction can come by the devil, but yet if I hide under the wings of my father, I will be saved. Wings is as of a wings, the wings of mother hands. How many of you grew up in the kampong? Ah, now got more people. <laughs> Praise God. This is Malaysia. If I ask Singapore, nobody grew up in the kampong. But during my time, we grew up in the kampong. And we could see that every time when the hawk, you know, this, this, this big bird would be flying, and then suddenly you see the mother hen will start to and then all the, all the chicks will come under her wings. And you will see, wow, God has made in such a way that these chicken they knew how to respond. But you see, if chicken, birds, they knew how to respond, what about you? You are human beings. You are children of the Most High God. Do you know how to respond? Sometimes when we run into trouble, we don't go to God straight away. We don't come Ooh. under His wings. We start to make phone calls to friends but i tell you your friends who can help you but your friends also is not eternal they will also die one day they also be gone and then you will go you know you got no money and then you go to find the along and along will give you the shot of the <laughs> along and a shot right so then what happened then you go into the problem then you come to church and then you pray and you speak in tongue but the along still come after you and put pain on your door and so on. You see what happened? We trusted in people. The Bible says when you trust in princes, you trust in kings, you trust in empires, you trust in superpowers, then you find that you are going to lose out because the greatest power is to God. And you have access to God. Today, I want you, every one of you, to trust Him. It means that don't just be a believer, be a disciple. Be a disciple. So that when you come under his wing, destruction will pass you by. So the Bible comes to this verse again, this early verse that we read. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not onto your own understanding. It says trust in the Lord with all your heart. Some of you, you like to twist words. You say, God only say the heart. Means that my heart trust God. Can now. If anything you do with my heart, I trust God. Like, you know, the heart attack, I trust God. But I don't trust God with my hands. 
I don't trust God with my brain. I don't trust God with my nose, my mouth, because it never says so. What it says, heart only. So we twist the word, and then we say, my hands, my hands, I trust myself. My legs, I trust myself. Right? Especially the hand that goes to the wallet, I trust myself a lot. When God says, I want you to give, you say, no, 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 no. Because it's not my heart that takes the money, it's my hand. But since he says, trust the Lord with my heart, therefore I don't worry about hands. Whatever the hand do is okay. So you see, we find excuses and reasons to sin against God. Then he says, lean not onto your own understanding. How many understanding do you have? You only have one understanding, you. You understand something. So what you put in, what you will spit out. So the brain receives information, the, the brain receives knowledge, the heart receives confirmation, but then you are going to spit out. You see, but you see what happened is that if you only have your own understanding, then let me say to you is that your understanding is very shallow because the deep call to the deep and the person who is deep is the Holy Spirit. If you start to learn from God, you learn from His Word, you will have more understanding. The wisdom will come from on high and the wisdom is not something that you churn out because of your, your long years of experience. So you understand, it says that lean not onto your own understanding because you discovered that your own understanding has caused a lot of problem, right? Have you? I have met young people who fell in love. One young la lady told me, he said that, Pastor, I love this young man. My first question is, is he a Christian? He said, not yet. But Pastor, I got peace. You got peace. It means that your own understanding, you accept this young man and you say you have peace, but I assure you that peace is not from God because the peace of God will not contradict His word. When you become unequally yoked, you have problem. In the future, more problem will come. But you see, because you say, I have peace, and you depend upon your own peace, but your peace is not coming from the wisdom of God. Therefore, you find that I'm going to lead you through and you will understand about the wisdom of God. That in all your ways, acknowledge Him. No, you see, in some ways, we acknowledge Him, you know. Lord, you know, when I am in the, uh, uh, you know, unhealthy way, please heal me. But other ways, please don't touch me. All right. How I do business, please don't touch me because, you know, I have to give under table money, under carpet money, uh, under window money, whatever. Lah. You must understand, this is Malaysia, God. You make me, you put me in Malaysia. Therefore, business must be done like this because you are doing like this. Therefore, then you go and put under uh, table money and then later on, you go and ask this guy and say, I want to tell you about the love of Jesus. And the guy said, I cannot believe you because your life contradicts what you preach. And so the, the Lord says, in all your ways, acknowledge Him, which means to say that you surrender. Acknowledge means that I reveal this to you. I surrender everything to you. Whatever I do, Lord, please help me. You see, some of us here, we like to exaggerate. We like to tell lies. All right? It's part of our habit. Because if we don't tell lies, we can't sleep. So every day we must, one lie a day will make us sleep well. Two lies, we will snore. But why are we doing this? Because it's a habit from the kingdom of darkness. And if we don't tell lies of somebody, or if we don't run down somebody, we cannot live. But God said, I break this already by the blood of Jesus and therefore, you are no longer in the covenant with Satan. You are now in the new covenant with the Savior and you can break that. And therefore, the commandments you can follow. It is not that you are forced to, but the principle found in the commandments of God, you can follow. You don't have to steal. You don't have to lie. You don't have to do all the things that the world are, they are doing. So because you... You let your ways be acknowledged by Him. He says what? He shall direct your path. He will guide you. Some of you say, Pastor, why God is not guiding me? Why God is not blessing me? I tell you why. Because you are doing things crooked. If you owe people money, you pay. Am I right? 
you don't pretend and say, every time when you, <laughs> when you see the person comes and then you just walk sideways. You, you avoid. <laughs> I'm not saying any one of you. <laughs> All right. But what I'm saying here is simple things like that. All right? So, he says, in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. So your future is decided by who you choose to believe and trust. If you want a good future, trust in the great God, trust in the God of eternity. Believe and trust Him. And so the source of abundance is that God is the source of every good thing. Because James 1 verse 17 says, Every good and every perfect gift comes from God. How many of you want good and perfect gift from God? Raise your hand. Claim it. Claim it. I want. I want. I want. And I tell you, this is a good and perfect gift. Doctor predicted that when I reach 60, I'll be in a wheelchair. Today I walk. Give a lot of clap offering, praise God. Today you will receive your gift. You will receive your miracle. You will receive your breakthrough. You will. I assure you, when you acknowledge, allow Him to acknowledge your way, everything you surrender to Him, He will be responsible for your life. And He will give you the blessings that you require. Some people say, oh, we don't need to ask God for a blessing anymore. <laughs> you know, it's like we have the Holy Spirit, therefore we don't have to ask God for the Holy Spirit. But yet, we need to seek God to be refilled. Every blessing comes from God. But if you are not ready, if you don't stretch your hands, you know, every time you see God, you put your hand behind your, your back. God say, can I give you a gift? Give la, give la. You want to give you, give la. Then God say, take it. Stretch out your hand. Uh. Busy la, a lot. Handphone la, you know. So you are so busy and you can't. You can't receive. And then you say, Pastor, I thought God has all the blessing from me. Yes, He got. But are you willing to receive? For example, God has saved the whole world. But not the whole world will be saved. Am I right? Only those who accept Jesus Christ as their Savior will be saved. So every good and every perfect gift must come from God. And God is your power base. Let's read this verse. One, two, three, go. If you abide, abide in me, and my words abide in you, and you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. What do you talk about? He's talking about abiding life. When you abide in the person of Jesus, and you abide in the principle of Jesus. There are two things, right? The person of Jesus is relationship. The principle of Jesus is direction and power. So, some people can have the principle of Christ, but they don't have the person of Christ. Because the, when you have the person of Christ, you will be accountable. Every day, Christ is saying, what have you done with your life? But when you have only the principle, principle everybody can follow. Principle are just, you know, doctrines are just simple uh, ideas for you. So like, for example, I come from Singapore and our hotels are one of the best in the world. Our airports are one of the best in the world. You know why? They use the principle of Christ. If you go to Changi Airport, they will go the second mile for you. Where they found this term, second mile? It's from the Bible. If you go the second mile, you will achieve success. You want to be great, you'll be servant of all. That's why you find that the hotel industry, they are great servants. You come only, they serve you. When you go to the counter, they give you a drink first. All right? And then you register, and all the staff are smiling. Like our usher, like that. they all are smiling. But they, are, they smile from the heart. That one smiling at your money. You come with no money and see, see if they smile at you. But they apply the principle, you see. They say that, I'll be the servant, then I'll be great. So their business grow very well. You know, that, for example, when I was in India. India is one of the best countries with some of the best hotels. When I went to this Ashoka uh, hotel, I'm not a partner there, but <laughs> when, when I went there, the treatment was tremendous. They treated me like I was the Prince of Persia or something, you know. And when it was time to go to the room, and there was this bellboy and he was helping me with my luggage, and if, if possible, he would have carried me all the way to my room. 
the treatment was superb. But when I went to LA, the treatment was very bad. In America, I was like so shocked, you know. And they, uh, the, 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 the front desk guy said, ah, fill it up. Don't even look at me. I said, I'm not coming back to this hotel again. You see? Because, you see, for us is that when people are able to serve us, we are able to respond. So you find that hotel industry, service industry, they knew about this principle. If I become a servant, I shall be great. If I become last, I shall be great. See, all these are very important, but yet they have no relationship with Jesus Christ. The person of Christ and the principle of Christ are two different things. So some of us here are Christian. We follow principle, but we don't follow Jesus. Today, I want you to learn how to follow Jesus. He said, if you abide in me first, then my word will abide in you. And you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. So, number one thing is that, please take this down, is spiritual intake. You need spiritual intake, all right? To habitually read and also meditate and study the Word of God. How many of you are in my huddle group? Huh? Who are those in my huddle group? Can you stand? Can you stand? Can you stand? Can you stand? Ah, let's give them a hand. Huh? These are... <laughs> you know why? You know why they are standing? Hey, where is Brother Aaron? Ah, lazy man, don't understand. understand. Yeah. Okay. All these are in my huddle group, yeah? This huddle group is called the King's Men. You see, they look very handsome. King's Men. And they are in my group, 10 of them in my group. All right? And they read their Bible every day. You see, in the cell group, you are not accountable. But in the huddle group, you are accountable. You are accountable to each other. So they have been reading two chapters a day. Some of them on their own have been reading 10, 15 chapters a day. But they will go back and read the two chapters with their friends. And then they will mark on the WhatsApp, read. And you find that they have studied books after books after books. Why? Because, you see, they have formed a habit of reading the Word of God. So every time, you know, I will ask them, have you read? And they say yes. See, it's important for you to form a habit to read and also to meditate the Word of God and to study the Word of God. I study the Word of God. I spend a lot of time studying. I can, you know, one chapter can take me days. I will go into the Greek. I will go into the Hebrew text. I will go into this extra biblical text and to see what they say. And I will go into all the other scholars, what they say about that text. Because my desire is to be able to assimilate not just the basic understanding, but I want to go deeper. It's like many layers. The first layer would be mud. So you dig through the mud. Then the second layer, most probably, you come to the copper. You come to the copper, then after the copper, you might come to the iron. And you dig deeper, and then you come to the silver. And then later on, you come to the gold. And then you come to the diamond. So you keep digging. So some of us are very happy with the mud. We are very muddy. We read very shallow. You know? Pastor, I read to the Bible. How fast? Very fast, Pastor. Very fast. I'm a quick reader. Understand or Don't really. How many times have you read not really understanding? 30 times. I read the Bible through 30 times, but I don't understand that thing. Sometimes I say when you read through the Bible, these daily two chapters, they are great. But take time to drill deep. When you drill down, the truth will come out. When you drill down, you find that it will touch you and you are able to impart. So habitually, read, meditate and study the Word of God. Okay, God remembers what He has said. And he will respond with favor to you if you remember his words. That's why we ask you to remember his word. Okay? So God remembers. When you remember his word, he will give you favor. Your positive response to the word of God is an indication of your honor and respect to God. When you say you love God, but you don't like his word, how many of you, don't raise your hand, huh? How many of you spend more time watching Korean movie than re reading the Bible? 
Don't raise your hand. Some of you are hiding behind your friends. I tell you why. Korean movies are more exciting. All right? So I had decided to ask the Korean director to convert the Bible into a Korean movie. So all of you will love it. And you will read the Bible in Korean. <laughs> so, you see, the next point is that there must be a spiritual connection. To abide with God, to abide with the Lord, is to communicate with God at all times. Some of you say, how often do I pray? I pray all the time. Even when I walk from here to the toilet, I was praying. Even when I'm walking and nobody talking to me, I'll be reaching out to God. Why? Because it becomes a habit. You must learn how to reach out to God. Some of you, when you are driving, you are not reaching out to God. You are reaching out to the driver next to you with sign language. You curse him. You say, stupid, idiot, don't know how to drive. Right? No, very quiet now. I know nobody in this church, you do that. But you see, we do that. Why? Because we have not made this into a habit. I teach you when you walk, when you work in the, uh, or when you clean your house, you talk to God. If you are not able to talk to God with intelligence, you speak in tongues. You speak in tongues. The gift of tongues is very important. Therefore, you find that when I move around the house, I speak in tongues. Even in the, in the bathroom, I speak in tongues. All right? I'll be singing in tongues. Some song you may not be able to remember, but you can sing in tongues. So it's important for you to make this into a desire, make this into a habit. Don't say that, you know, I have a particular ritual only. If I don't, I'm not at this room and this space, I cannot pray. Then you find that God is not everywhere for you. God is only in that one corner that you can pray. It's good to have a corner, but yet don't limit yourself to that. So you communicate with God all the time and pray to God over every major decision. That God-directed decision may be the turning point in your life. Some of you, before you do any major thing, pray! Don't be too smart. I told you, now you have the knowledge of good and evil. And that's why you think you are so smart. You don't need God. I have learned the hard way. I make so many mistakes in my life because I thought so. Some of you are in investment, right? Before you invest, pray about it. Before you trust somebody to be your partner in business, pray about it. But, but, but some of you say, but pastor, I pray, huh? I got peace, you know. But what kind of peace you got? Because when, you, when your, your spirit is not filled with the word of God, the peace that comes out is inadequate. It's your own understanding. You have peace because you, you comprehend something yourself out of your own understanding. Therefore, keep feeding the word of God. Keep feeding the word of God. Then God can direct because the word is inside. Your conscience only spits out what it faithfully put in. If you put in Korean movie, then all your decisions will be based on the actors in the Korean movie. Right? That's why some of you now, you began to slap your, your friend on the back of the head. Right? The other day I watched this Korean movie, the guy, <laughs> wow. So this is very violent. But that's it. So let your life be directed by God. Now, Holy Spirit is the only person now that God wants you to get connected because when you get connected with the Holy Spirit you will find the Holy Spirit will reveal Jesus and then when you get connected with Jesus Jesus will reveal the Father this is how it works so when you are connected with the Holy Spirit what did the Bible say but dear friend must build each other up in your most holy faith pray in what let's read pray in what the power of the Holy Spirit. Why? Don't you have power to pray? Don't you have your own mouth? Don't you have muscles here that you can, you can pray? Why do you need to pray in the Holy Spirit? With the power of the Holy Spirit? Because let me tell you, you are fighting supernatural beings. Supernatural beings, fallen angels are around you. You need supernatural power. You believe me, you need it. 
If those of you have cast out evil spirit, you will need it. You know that. And one day I pray, every one of you be able to cast out evil spirit. How many of you like to cast out evil spirit? Many of you. Tonight I shall ask them to come to your house. <laughs> huh? Then you cast out. Ah. Right? Is that good? Is that good? No? No good? Instead of you going to find them, they can't find you, right? <laughs> Even if they come to your house, they don't want to come to your house. That Taiwanese brother who got third eye, remember I told you? The day when he became, let me tell you this story. He was so upset because when he was a child, he would look at the mother and he would saw the auntie sitting next to the mother and he would say, Mother, why is this auntie sitting next to you? And mother said, who? Because there's no auntie there. There's nobody there. But he saw this spirit sitting next to the mother. And this auntie, he called her auntie. Eh? This auntie, before he would sleep at night as a child, the auntie would come and look at him and say, Means you are sleeping. And so when he grew up, he was very irritated. He said that, I want to get rid of all these spirits. Because he saw these spirits walking back and forth. So he said, I want to be a master to chase out evil spirits. And so you know what he did? He went and, and he learned from the Sifu. And some of these Buddhistic uh, uh, Sifu, they had power. So he learned from one master. He was able to chase away some spirit. But the, the, the evil spirit of the second level came in. He chased away the lowest one. The next higher one came in. Then he went and learned from another Sifu. And then he was able to chase this level, but the higher level came in. And so he, he said there's no end to it. Then he began to even uh, learn and be became a disciple of a master in his dream. In the night, his spirit, his soul, would join this spiritual master and go and cast out evil spirit. That's what he said. Okay? But his third eye will allow him to see evil spirit. But one day, his mother discovered that she had cancer of the breast. And so, all the Sifu couldn't help her, all the temple couldn't help her. But one friend came to her, and that friend was a Christian, and she said that, I bring you to church. And so the mother went to church. And then the requirement was that if Jesus healed you, you have to become a disciple of Jesus. And she said, yes. If Jesus were to heal me, I will be a disciple of Jesus. And true enough, Jesus healed her. Give a lot of clap offering. Praise God. Because miracle coming your way. Jesus healed her. And then she became a disciple of Jesus. She began, she attended church faithfully and so on. But the son was still dabbling with all these demons and so on. And he was successful in casting out some demons, but not all. Because every level got higher and higher and higher. And he became very frustrated. One day the mother wanted to go to church for only half an hour. And then the mother didn't have a vehicle. So the mother said, can you drive me to church and you just wait at the car park? It's only half an hour. So the son said, okay, I'll drive you to church. But when they reached church, and then mom said, why you stay in the car park so hot, you know? Why don't you come up? So he went up. And he went up, he met the pastor. And the pastor said, uh, I learned that you study all kinds of, uh, you know, Bible, you know, so-called Bible. Right? So he said, yes, yes, yes. I study a lot of like I Ching and whatever Ching, you know. Uh, so then the pastor said, why don't you study this one? Since you study so many, nothing wrong for you to study one extra one, right? This is called Sun Ching. Sun Ching means Bible. And so he said, okay, makes sense. So he ran and he studied the Bible. The first chapter that he opened was the book of Luke, the first book. He opened the book of Luke and he began to read. And then he came to the part when Jesus cast out demon. Wow! He said, this guy, uh, this Sifu, uh, very powerful. No? More powerful than my Sifu. He said, this is Tong Hong. Same, uh, you know, uh, same job. All right? Means that this man here, he's very powerful. 
For me, I have to do all kinds of chanting before I could chase out the demon. But this guy, just one word, the demon will come out. He said, I want to read more. And as he began to read more, and then he became more attracted to Jesus, and he began to give up on all the other masters, and he began to follow this master. And one day, he accepted Jesus as his savior, and then he was baptized, but his third eyes were still, was still open. And then he said, this is what he, he said, he said that he saw the evil spirit, they were avoiding him. They no longer come and say, are you sleeping? No longer. They didn't like him. They stayed one group away. And slowly they get out, they got out of the house. They didn't want to stay where he stayed. And then on the one good day, then that third eye was closed. So what I want you to know is that through this man experience, you know that there are wandering spirits. But yet, because by the grace of God, you don't see them. But also by the grace of God, you have the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why he says, pray in the power of the Holy Spirit. Pray in the Spirit at all times, the Bible says, Ephesians 6, 18, with every kind of prayer and petition. Asking you to do this, why? To this end, stay alert with all perseverance in your prayers for all saints. Means that you don't just pray in the Spirit for yourself, but you pray for all of us. Today, we pastors pray for you. Right? Every time when we receive WhatsApp, things that you are going through, you have pain and all that, you find immediately we step in and we begin to intercede for you. So, we need to intercede for one another. I was wondering, you know, when you fall sick, we will go to hospital and visit you. If I fall sick, would you come and see me or not? Yeah. Uh, please don't come, huh? because I need to sleep. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. The next thing that you're going to have is called spiritual wisdom. If any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault. It will be given to you. Let me explain. When you trust God, what is going to happen? You are going to engage Him in His Word. When you receive His Word, you are going to have His Holy Spirit. His Holy Spirit and His Word combined give you wisdom. Therefore, you seek God. You say, give me wisdom, Lord. Give me wisdom. So it's not that some people say, oh, God is all wisdom. Therefore, you don't need to ask Him. Nonsense. He says that you should ask God. You should ask God. Nothing wrong to ask God for the blessing of wisdom. We need wisdom. How many of you here, you say you need wisdom? Raise your hand. All right. Okay. But Gandhi at that time, he said he didn't need wisdom. At one time when Gandhi was, was asked by a professor, you know, say, would you take wisdom or money? Then Gandhi said, I'll take money. Then the professor said, I'll take wisdom. Then the professor said, why do you take money? He said, to each of those, to each one of us who lack something, then we will take that something that we need. Means that Gandhi already got wisdom. So therefore, you, you will take money. If you, if you don't have wisdom, then you ask God for wisdom. You don't catch the joke. Go back and think about it. <laughs> or watch this. <laughs> All right. So what is wisdom? Okay, I want everybody to read this. What is wisdom? Wisdom is the ability to distinguish and differentiate right from wrong, truth from falsehood, reality from deception, honesty from dishonesty, God's ways versus other ways it is an ability to distinguish you must know how to differentiate you must know how to differentiate which place will give you blessing and which place will not it's not that you go to just any church when you go to a church and you find that the church is just wanting your money and not giving you that spiritual link with God then you find that maybe you pause a little bit but when you come to a place where you move in power and authority, then you say, let me try. Because you need a lot of wisdom. And some people don't want to come to our church is because of what? Because this is a requirement. That you need to become disciple of Christ. So you will never rise higher than the wisdom that God gives you. Take this down. This is a power phrase. You will never rise higher than the wisdom that God gives you. If you only keep your wisdom, then you are always at a very low level. So, the next point is spiritual vision. 
Where there is no prophetic vision, the people perish and cast off restraint. And happy is he who keeps the law or keeps the instruction. When you keep the instruction of God, you know what happened? You will have the vision of God. God is going to give you the ability to see into your future. Your future is not stuck. Your future is not controlled by anybody. It's not controlled by your bosses. It's not controlled by your customers. It's not controlled by economy. It's not controlled by anything. Right now, I know that uh, Singapore and Malaysia is having some tension. Am I right? You read the newspaper. I'm a Singaporean. Huh? When I look at that, I should be shivering. I'm over here with all the Malaysians staring at me. No, I tell you one thing. It's because my vision is first upon God. And God shows me what is in the future. I live or I die, I belong to God. Now, someone asked me and said, Pastor, why the Lord allows some young people to die? You know? It's not that the Lord put death over here. Death came because of sin. And this world was a perfect world. It became imperfect. And therefore, death continued to happen. But one day, God is saying that there shall be no more death means nobody shall die, everybody shall become healthy. This kind of healing is a sample of the future. You will be healed as a sample of the future. In the future, nobody will be sick. In the future, nobody will reject God, all right? Because you will see Him face to face. So this is what God wants. The difference between the Garden of Eden and now is that now we cannot see God face to face. We have to depend on faith, by faith. We hear God. Some of you even ask me, Pastor, how do I listen to God? Because you need by faith. But when it was the time of Adam and Eve, God walked with Adam and Eve. So during the time of Adam and Eve, they didn't have to pray. They just need to talk to God face to face. But today, we have to pray. But one day when we go to heaven, we will have no need to pray anymore. Amen. We will see God face to face. Give the Lord a big clap offering for that wonderful future. That is your future. Praise be to God. Losers, okay, listen very carefully. Losers focus on what they are going through now. Oh Lord, I'm in pain. Oh Lord, I'm cursed. Oh Lord, I have no money. Oh Lord, look at my stupid husband. Oh Lord, look at my stupid wife. You know. <laughs> grumbling, mumbling, mumbling, grumbling, mumbling, grumbling. No wonder. Actually, the husband is very brilliant man. After you call him stupid, he becomes stupid. Because there's power in your tongue. Every day you say, Say low la, chun choy la. And you keep repeating it. Or some of you got very gorgeous wife, beautiful and good cook and all that. But every time when she cooks, you say, The same food, ah, huh? The same food, ah, huh? And then one day she refused to cook. Then you have to go out and buy. What happened to you? Because you use your mouth. Please learn how to control your mouth. Life and death is in your mouth. Some of your sons and daughters are so stupid because you condemn them. Huh? When they were five years old, you say, look at him, chon choy, chon choy, chon choy. Huh? So stupid, so stupid, so stupid. Huh? Just like the father, so stupid. So the father also becomes stupid. Right? Because you keep condemning, condemning. Why? Why can't you shut your mouth? Yeah? Put zipper and put lock. And it's better because I can tell you, nobody will misinterpret your silence. Your silence will be good. Learn how to speak the future. Champions focus on where God is leading them. Means that I know who I am and I know where God is leading me. I trust God. Learn to do that. And then you find that you'll be happier. All right? So instead of returning to your memory of defeat, let God give you a new vision and move you into your future. He wants a marvelous life of success for you. Some of you say, yo, God doesn't want me to succeed. Nonsense! How many of you have children? Not sure. Yeah. At least some of you, you think, ah, yeah, I have. All right. How many of you want your children to fail? Raise your hand. No, not me, right? How many of you want your children to succeed? Raise your hand. You claim it, right? You really want your children to succeed? You want? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. All right. If you, as a, <laughs> as, as a, a earthly parents, you want your children to succeed, I tell you, your heavenly father wants you to succeed. All right. 
You say, but, 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 pastor, uh, God wants us to be poor. Who says so? If you are supposed to be rich, you are supposed to be rich. All right? But whatever God gives you, He gives you the best. Some of us, God gives different gifts. But God wants a marvelous life of success. Success is what? Becoming the person that God wants you to be. Therefore, you need a confirmation. You need to find out what God wants you to be. If God wants you to be a pastor, be the very best pastor. If God wants you to be a lawyer, be the very best lawyer. If God wants you to be the doctor, be the very best doctor. You are not comparing with others. You are comparing with yourself. I'm not comparing with other pastors. I compare with myself. If today I'm not preaching the very best, then I fail you. You understand that? So same thing. When you go to work, you go to work for somebody, don't just scrap by, you know, oh, I'm just waiting for 5 p.m. Then I go home. Actually, not 5 p.m. 4.45 already, you go to the toilet, put makeup already, ready to go home. Because all you want is just pass the time. That is misery. That is not serving Christ. The Bible says, serve the boss as though you are serving Christ. Serve your company as though you are serving the kingdom of God. That's why whatever you do, do the very best. He wants you to have a marvelous life of success. So, then it comes to the last point, is the spiritual mission. Uh, for Paul the Apostle, he says that, Jesus said to Paul, he said, yes, I'm sending you to the Gentiles to open their eyes so they may turn from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God. That's what Jesus said to Paul and that's what Jesus said to you. There are people in your family who are still in the power of Satan. You need to tell them. When my father was in the power of Satan, I tell you, my father was one of the best human beings in the world. Best. Before he was a Christian, he didn't smoke, he didn't drink. After work, he would come home and he would stay with us. He taught me Chinese. All right, he spent time, he made sure we study and he worked very hard. He sold chicken rice in the day, but at night, he was the father, he was the husband. Faithful man but he was in the kingdom of darkness. The day when I came into the kingdom of light, what did I do? I told him about the kingdom of light. He slapped me, but it's okay. Because five years later, he moved from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. You understand? You want to give a lot of clap off and praise God. I tell you, this will happen in your family because you say so. Because you say so. You have power authority. Don't say, Pastor, you don't understand. My, my father, my mother, they came from China. My father came from China, a true Chinaman. Very devout, you know, ancestor, worshipper. Every day he will worship my grandfather and all my great-grandfather and so on, you know. And he will climb up. That altar was very high. I used to help him until I became a Christian. Then I couldn't help him. Then he said, you want me to fall down? I said, no, I will hold your leg. You can put up the joystick. <laughs> but I won't put up the joystick. I used to be the one doing it. But I had to. But then, you know, then all my uncle, auntie say, you know, this unfilial son, make the father do all these things. You know, you are very bad. I took that for years. But the day when my father became a Christian, the day when my mother became a Christian, you know what they said? I want to follow your God. Your God is the real God. I say, why? I don't want to follow your auntie's God. Why, why, why? Your auntie's God is fake one. I say, how come you say like that? Because your auntie ate food offered to idols one. And she also put justice and so on. So I don't want to believe her God. I want to believe your God because your, your, your God is pure. You see, when you make a sacrifice, you give glory to God. But some of us here are so shaky. You know, we are part-time Buddhist, part-time Hindu, part-time Christian. Christmas time, we are Christian. Easter time, we are Christian. But Tong Tong Chang, Chinese New Year, we become Buddhist. Pai Ti Gong, Pai Ti Gong, Pai Ti Gong. What with us? No wonder nobody can get saved through you. How many of you actually invited people to come to Christ? The Lord says, open their eyes that they may turn from darkness to light. 
from the kingdom of Satan to the kingdom of God. And then they will receive forgiveness for their sin and be given a place among God's people who are set apart by faith in Jesus Christ. Set apart. You are now set apart. So let me sum it up, alright? The last verse I want you to take note of is Matthew 6.33. Write this down. For seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. You want anything. You want success. You want anything in this world. First seek God. When He approves it, everything will come because God is a God of favor. When God gives you favor, nobody can stop you. Some of you have been struggling for many years. I can tell you, when God sends one man of favor or one woman of favor, that will take away 10 years of your hard work. You can work so hard for connection, but God just sent one person of favor. That's it. Trust it. You trust God, God of favor. So seek first the kingdom. Kingdom means what? The word basilia means reign of God. Kick the, uh, seek the rule of God. Seek the control of God. Seek the love of God. Seek the authority of God. Then you find that all this favor shall come to you. Don't seek the favor. Seek the favor giver. Amen? Amen. Give a lot of clap offering. Praise God. I get so excited because I know God is going to bless you. And therefore, take note of these five pointers that you have just learned. Number one is that when you have trust, you need to have spiritual intake. When you have trust, you need spiritual connection with the Holy Spirit. And you need to pray, right? And then you will receive wisdom. And from wisdom, you will receive vision. And from vision, you will receive your mission. Amen. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes in the presence of the living God. This God loves you. This God loves you.